Do human brains synchronize? Your brain is uniquely yours. There is no other brain on the planet which acts in the same way as yours. At least not 100% of the time, anyway. Recent studies seem to indicate that brains are capable of mimicking the wave patterns found in the brains of others. When two beings get together for whatever reason, the activity in the brain starts to mirror that of their partner. So what does this mean? Are we linked together like one giant hive mind? Can human brains really synchronize? Number three, conversational synchronicity. Have you ever had a conversation with someone where it felt like you were talking to another version of yourself? As if this person was so connected to you, it seemed as if your brains were directly hooked up to one another, allowing you to know each other's thoughts, finish each other's sentences, and form an unexplainable understanding between one another. This may have happened with a lifelong friend or maybe with a stranger. You may have developed this bond with someone while you were high as a kite, or you could have been stone cold sober. Either way, this feeling is hard to ignore. As for a brief moment, you get to experience the pleasure of truly knowing another human being. You step outside yourself and become something more. It's as if your two brains have become one. They have become synchronized. This may sound like the kind of junk science your homeschooled flat earther cousin believes in, but according to recent research published over the past few months, brain synchronicity may be real. In July, researchers from the Bosk Center on Cognition, Brain, and Language used electroencephalography machines to study human activity during conversation. Their subjects consisted of 16 men and 14 women who did not know each other, who had not banged each other, at least not before the experiment, and who were split up into same-sex pairs for the duration of the test. When the brainwaves of these conversational couples were tracked, it was discovered that certain oscillations in one brain would be mimicked in the other, eventually becoming synchronized as the pair continued to talk. The team was able later to tell who was having a conversation with whom just by looking at their brainwave patterns side by side with their conclusion being that human brains seem to work together on a subconscious level to facilitate communication. This research is still in its early days, but it indicates that there is far more to communication than meets the eye. We aren't just a bunch of hairless apes in makeup and t-shirts making noises at each other. We humans communicate on another level which we do not yet understand, and which certainly merits further investigation. The only problem so far has been that observing a live brain in action can be a little messy, until now. Number 2. Monkey See, Monkey Do From a behavioral perspective, the study of biological creatures is often limited to the external, i.e. what we can see an animal doing. We see monkeys chasing one another and assume they're play fighting or flirting. We see an ocelot chewing on the face of another, and it's probably some kind of sexy combat thing. Unfortunately, such simple observations limit our understanding as much as it would if you were to try and replicate a car by looking at its bodywork. Ooh, look, shiny, shiny red and a sweet spoiler. Those must be the things that make it go so fast. It's only when you pop up the hood and inspect the engine that you truly start to learn how the car does what it does. This applies to animal behavioral research, too. Smash open a badger and you can take a look at its insides in all their gory glory. But not only is this mean, it's also pointless if you want to know how a creature works when it's alive. You can make a decent guess based on the dead physical structures you can see with your eyes, but this is a distinct second best to seeing organs performing tasks. This is especially true for brains. Just like the engine of a car, the biological brain can only be truly understood if you can observe it in action. And to facilitate this, you need some sturdy old brain chips and a willing participant. Recent advances in the study and durability of such devices means that we're now able to record and analyze brain activity in living creatures to a higher degree than ever before. This leap in technology was illustrated by the fascinating insights into behavior we were given by four independent studies presented at the Society for Neuroscience last month. 
one of which indicates that creatures synchronize in order to survive, and that despite our mutual communications, we don't actually care about anyone other than ourselves. Number one, the selfish brain. Brains do not exist independently of other brains. Depending on the species, they exist within a world inhabited by hundreds, thousands, millions, or billions of others which are interacting and responding just like them. Until recently, the brain has always been studied on its own as the organ of one creature. However, this new multi-brain approach to investigating the ways of the mind promises to revolutionize our understanding of how and why living beings act the way they do. And based on recent findings, it's becoming clear that synchronicity plays a crucial role in all aspects of biological interaction. Dr. Miguel Nicolelis is the professor of neuroscience at Duke University School of Medicine. His team of researchers conducted a cute little experiment where one monkey was made to drive a vehicle to obtain a reward of some fruit, with another spectator monkey receiving the reward if the driver was successful. What a parasite. I guess we all know a bum like that. Oh, and trust me, we tried really hard to find this footage, because who doesn't want to see a little old monkey driving and thinking it's people? Anyway, while this experiment took place, researchers analyzed the two monkeys' brains and found that on some occasions, they fired 60% of the same neurons within their respective motor cortices. These two monkeys were not synchronizing just to have a conversation. They were doing so to acquire food. This suggests that many fundamental acts of survival require such synchronization to take place, which builds on the findings of the Basque study of conversational synchronization. Further studies explored at the Society for Neuroscience discovered that many acts of cooperation between biological creatures have a selfish motivation behind them. For example, Wei Song Ong studied rhesus macaques engaging in a game of chicken. Yeah, we couldn't find a video of that either, sorry folks. Ms. Ong found that while cooperation and synchronicity would take place if both monkeys were at risk, one monkey would not help the other when its counterpart was placed in peril. Acts which seem empathetic or altruistic, such as giving someone food or cleaning their lice-riddled backs, are actually based on the individual's instinct to survive, with their potential survival linked to the longevity of others within their social group. This means that synchronicity is real. Synchronicity is selfish, and synchronicity is also crucial to the survival of any biological being. So what does this revelation mean for human beings? How could we apply this to improve ourselves? We're going to explore this in our bonus video, A Synchronized Society, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality, visited by only a select few, whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. 
But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.